Scuba diving is all about redundancy because, let's face it, we are going somewhere we really shouldn't be going. You should be familiar with a bunch of different acronyms for your pre-dive safety checks so you're sure that your gear is working, but there are lots of other things that you need to check before a dive. And just don't leave it up to your dive guide because they can miss things just like the best of us. And it's best to question something and prevent it then it might come into an instant a little bit later. So just like the never-ending pre-flight safety checks your pilot goes through before a flight, here are, in no particular order, the best checks to do before a dive. A lot of dive sites around the globe have the current water temperature noted somewhere on their website or social media, and they update it every single day. Uh, before this, one of the first things that I do when you go and visit a dive site is literally gauge the water temperature, either by plonking your dive computer in for a little bit and then it tells you how warm the water is or how cold it is, uh, or of course the tried and tested hand, uh, plonk your hand in and see how long you can keep your hand in the water without it feeling and cold. Um, knowing the water temperature lets you decide better whether to wear a hood and gloves or not, uh, a thicker undersuit, or basically how long to plan your dives. It's very important to understand what the water temperature is, because yeah, you don't want to get cold. Always check your weighting at the beginning of every single dive. Uh, you just need to be sure that you have enough lead for the entire dive, not just the beginning. The worst time to find out that you don't have enough lead is at your final stop and you can't stay down. That or when you're sat on the rib and realize that you forgot to put your belt on or your pouches in. Yeah, sorry guys, we, we need to go all the way back to the main boat to, to pick up my weight belt because I forgot it. I've done that once. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's going in the video. I literally had to, so the boat kind of went around this peninsula. I had to sort of run. I had to pick up my weight belt and then join up with them <laughs> later on and then swim out to them. It's like, yeah, yeah, never again. Get used to checking tidal calendars and learn the difference between a spring and a neap tide. Check out the weather report for a few days beforehand every single dive and you can better predict what the conditions will be and if it's even worth going out. If there's been high winds and rainfall then chances are that visibility will be awful. If you're diving freshwater lakes where there can be a lot of algae then skip the bright and sunny days because that stuff just loves it. You want the clear spring morning where it's been cold and naff all winter and the algae has all sunk down to the bottom. One of my best ever dives in a free, uh, in a, uh, a fresh water site was on a fresh March morning on the very first sunny day of the year. So there was no one else around stirring up all the sediment. The sun had only just come out so the algae was still sleeping on the bottom and visibility went from the usual five something meters to about 20. I saw things I've never ever noticed before at that dive site. I've also been on dives in the Arctic where it's just glorious in the water, but actually getting out was just a bucket full of grief. Clambering out over snow-covered rocks sounds adventurous, but I'd take a rib exit in the Red Sea any day over that. It's just grief, man. You've got like a steel cylinder on your back, like 15 kilos of weight on your belt, and um, you've got like this tidal and you're like trying to climb out over these rocks and you're like, oh. One of the first things your dive professional is doing when they arrive at a dive site is taking note of entry and exit points, resources, and of course, conditions. You need to keep in the back of your mind, what if the worst should happen? What if you have to get your unresponsive buddy out of the water? Is it worth heading to the nearest dry land for a short taxi or swimming that little bit further to an actual exit point where you can get them out easier? The same goes for when you're in the water. Before the dive, you usually get to see a little map of the dive site. Don't just glaze over this, actually create a kind of mental map of the dive site so that you can better orientate yourself if you do get turned around during the dive. If you're penetrating wrecks, then just practice your route in your head. First, try and picture where the entry and exit points will be. I mean, I've actually dived with professional level divers who've gestured towards very, very wrong entry points 
just minutes after an actual briefing. Uh, if you need to take notes, then there's no shame in writing down plans on a wrist slate that you can refer to later. Note little things when you first get in the water, like which direction is the sun shining from, which way the water naturally pushes you, little things like that. If you have a compass, then perfect. Check that right at the beginning of the dive, so that way you can orientate yourself so you know which way is back to the boat or shore, even if you do get turned around. Same as before, just take note of where you're entering the water, where you're exiting the water, and at what time. What's your plan when you get down to a certain tank pressure? Make sure you know where to turn your dive, where your maximum depth will be, and whatever you want to see um, where that's gonna be. There's no point cruising down to 30 meters if the entrance to the wreck is just at 18 meters. Just check over what your profile should be and where you should be at what time, your gas management profile, all that kind of stuff. Just make sure you're at the right place at the right time. Is your buddy squared away? Do they know what the dive plan is? Is all of their gear working properly? Remember that it's that's your regulator that you are gonna be reaching for if something does go wrong, so you wanna make sure that that one works as much as the one that you're using. If something does go wrong, could your buddy honestly help you out and get you out of the water all by themselves? Can you communicate effectively with them underwater? All this kind of things. You wanna make sure that you're both working as an effective buddy team. Like us. Don't just take a couple of breaths from your primary. You have to look over all of your hoses for wear and failure points. Check that nothing is twisted over and everything is accessible. It may be easy to reach that dive knife on the surface, but if you're tangled up in something, then you need to be sure that you actually can get to it to free yourself. Make sure all of your dump valves on your BCD are working correctly. Everything on your suit is done up and squared away and comfortable. That scrunched up sock in your dry suit boot might not bother you right now, but an hour into the dive, and that will be all that you can think about, but you cannot fix it in the water. So make sure it's done at the beginning of the dive. So what do you guys check before your dive? And of course, when do you check them? Is it days beforehand or like five minutes before you jump in? Uh, let's make diving safer. Uh, I don't wanna make diving just one giant checklist that you have to run through at the beginning of every dive, but I do want to make it safer so that nobody has a bad experience and everybody goes diving more. Let's discuss safety procedures in the comments and remember to like and share and do all of that sort of social media thing so that more people can see this video. If you enjoy the video, of course, hit that like button, all the social stuff. Uh, and just remember, we also have our Teesprings account now, so you can click on the link below to check out our own sort of merchandise, our t-shirts and stuff down in the link below. Thanks for watching and safe diving. We are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.